Hello guys, it's been a while since my last video, but today I have a new video about hairspring shocks. In this video uh, I will talk a bit about the hairspring curve of an air shock and I will give special uh, attention to the negative air chamber of the shock and how does the volume of the negative air chamber uh, contributes to the, to the air spring curve. In this video I will tell you that a big negative air chamber uh, will provide you a much better air spring curve similar to a coil uh, spring. So this is a typical air spring force curve and you most of you probably already saw a similar curve to this one and this curve shows you the force needed to compress the shock against the shock travel and this curve has basically three shapes so the first parts of the travel you have this this shoulder here which contributes to the initial stiffness characteristic of an air shock then you have a pretty flat mid part okay so a flat or dead mid travel with a low mid travel support and then you have the characteristic final ramp up of of an air shock so this is, these are the three phases of of an air spring curve in this video i will show you that the negative air chamber of of your shock will contribute mostly to the first half of the, the air spring curve and by changing the volume of the negative air chamber you can change the shape the initial shape of the curve and as you most of you probably already know by changing the main air chamber volume of the shock you will um, change affect the the last part of the air spring curve Okay, so the negative air chamber is basically the space behind the main piston of an air shock. Okay, so here you have the main chamber, here you have the, the piston, and this space here behind the piston is the negative um, air chamber. So I built this diagram where you can see better the, the positive chamber here, okay, the blue zone, and then the green zone behind the piston, the main piston, is the negative chamber. So, why the hell do you need a negative air chamber? To answer this, that let's forget the negative air chamber and let's uh, see what happens to the shock if you only have a positive main chamber. So, in this case, uh, when the shock is at top out, the main chamber is always and constantly uh, exerting force against the piston because the main chamber is under pressure. So, it, it's always making force against the piston. So this means that the, the piston only moves, okay, so the shock only compresses when you hit a very big force that counteracts this preload force, okay? Okay, so in this scenario, the sh if you hit a small bump force, this force will not be enough to counteract the main, um, the main chamber uh, force, the, the preload of the main chamber. So in this case, the shock will not move and this uh, translates in a stiffness and a harsh, harsh rate. So with the negative uh, air chamber, basically the hair is trying to, to push up the piston, okay, while the positive main chamber uh, pushes down the air piston, okay. So with the negative air chamber, the pressure of the, ne the negative chamber is controlled by this transfer port and if you place this transfer port in a correct position, thus at the top out, the forces that the negative chamber produce will be exactly the same as the force of the main chamber and therefore both forces can cancel out each other. And now in this scenario, a small bump force here will cause the movement of the piston. So to conclude, the negative chamber is important to increase the initial sensitivity of the shock at top out. So to understand a bit what happens to the dynamics of the pressures in, in the both chambers, basically when the shock compresses, okay, um, the volume of the main chamber will be will be small, smaller and therefore it, the pressure will increase. The opposite happens in the negative chamber, okay? When the shock compresses, the negative chamber becomes bigger and therefore the pressure drops along the travel. 
Okay, so to understand exactly uh, the contribution of the both chambers to the final uh, spring curve, I built an air shock simulator, and here you have only the, the graph for the positive chamber. Okay, so you can see here a huge breakaway force uh, needed to start compressing the shock, and then a pretty characteristical curve of uh, air spring. Now let's see what happens with the negative chamber forces. As you can see, um, the negative chamber force decreases along the travel, as I told you previously. And now the overall spring curve of an air shock is basically the subtraction of the main chamber forces minus the negative chamber. So now if you uh, subtract the blue line with the green line, you will end up with a red line, which is the net result of both chambers and shows you the final result, the final um, air spring uh, curve of, of an air shock. So this typical curve is nothing more than the result of both chambers acting together uh, along the travel. So now that you understand what is a negative chamber, we are going to see uh, how does the volume of the negative chamber affects the overall uh, air spring curve of your shock. And basically, I will show you that a big negative chamber uh, will provide you much more uh, initial sensitivity and also more mid-stroke support. So, and here you have some examples of big negative chambers. Okay, this part here, and you can uh, you can also see here the the Debonair with a secondary negative chamber, which this one doesn't have. And let's see what happens. Okay, so in th this graph here shows you what happens. Uh, to the net air spring curve when you change the volume of the, the negative chamber, okay? So the green, the green zone in this diagram. So a very tiny small negative chamber will produce an air spring curve like this one with a very stiff initial uh, shoulder. And uh, in the other hand, a very big negative chamber will produce a very linear and soft uh, curve uh, in the first part of the travel, okay? With a bigger negative chamber, you get a much softer initial travel. Therefore, you need to increase the, pe the pressure of the main chamber to keep the same sag. Thus, in this graph, okay, this graph is exactly the same as the previous one. The main difference is that I change the pressure of the main chamber to keep constant the same sag. Okay, so now that you have the same sag from the, from for all shocks, you now can see. Uh, exactly the effect of the negative chamber in the air spring curve. So basically a small negative chamber produces a very stiff um, initial travel and also a pretty a flat and dead mid-travel, okay? While a big negative chamber produces a very soft and linear travel uh, with, a, with a nice mid-stroke support and as a consequence it will also bottom out with a much higher force than this one. Okay, so by simply increasing the negative chamber volume, you have a much softer initial travel, and therefore you need more pressure on the shock to keep the same side. And by the other end, you also have more mid-stroke support. Uh, this feature combined end up with uh, more force needed to bottom out the shock. And therefore, uh, in these kind of shocks where you have a big negative chambers, they also have a big positive a bigger positive air chamber to counteract and to decrease a bit the final uh, progressivity of the shock. So I built a new graph, uh, uh, similar to the previous ones, but now uh, I changed the main chamber volume accordingly to keep up the same bottom-out force. And now this graph shows you that a big negative air chamber is softer, as we already saw, it has more mid-stroke support and you don't need so much ramp up at the end to keep the same bottom out force. While in, in a small negative chamber, you have here an initial stiffness, okay, initial uh, shoulder stiffness, and then you have a pretty flat mid-travel, and then you need um, a more ramp up at the end to get the same bottom out force. Okay, so now looking back to holder shocks like this one here, um, these shocks have a negative uh, uh, air chamber length, about 5 to 7 millimeters of length. 
while the newer air shock sleeves like the Evol, Debonair, Corsets and so on have a length equivalent to 10 to 15 millimeters. So this graph here shows you and compares uh, both, both shocks. A uh, older one with a 5 millimeter negative chamber like this one here. Uh, and uh, a newer shock like uh, an Evol or a Corset or so on with a bigger negative air chamber. Uh, just before moving on, I already talked a lot about the negative air chamber and how does it influences the, the first half of, of the travel. And as you probably already know by, by now, uh, by changing the volume of the main chamber, you control the final ramp up uh, of, of the shock. So here you have um, a graph showing you what happens when you change the volume of the main chamber of the shock. And thus, by decreasing the volume of the main chamber, you get much higher ramp-ups at the end of the travel. But you already know this, right? So, let's move on. And in this graph here, uh, you basically have a comparison between the big negative uh, air chamber with a coil spring. Okay, And as you can see, a very big negative chamber would uh, end up, will provide you a very similar curve to the coil shock, okay? This is the coil spring one. But there is a difference. The difference is that with the air shocks, you can still control the final ramp up using spacers in the main chamber, as I show you in the previous slide. So this graph here shows you that only with the big negative air chamber, you can get a really and truly progressive uh, air shock. Because with a whole air spring sleeve with a small negative air chamber, you can still have a pretty uh, high ramp up at the end of the travel, but this doesn't make your shock progressive, because you also have a pretty flattened death uh, mid-stroke support. So by combining these two parts of the travel, you still end up with a pretty uh, similar bottom-out force to a coil shock. Okay, so only with a big negative air chamber, you are able to get a truly uh, progressive air shock, like this case here. So as a conclusion, we saw that the negative air chamber is important to eliminate the initial breakaway force of the main chamber. Okay, so this, this increases the, the top-out sensitivity. But also, we also saw, and this is very important, that a big negative uh, volume produces a much smoother shock under sag, and it also provides more mid-stroke support. And therefore, a big negative air chamber will be similar to a coil shock with an advantage that you can tune the final ramp up and you can provide and, and you can get a really progressive uh, shock at the end. So, in fact, you can only get a truly progressive shock with a big negative air chamber. Because as we saw previously, small negative air chambers are not progressive. They can indeed have a final a final ramp up, but they also have a flat and dead mid travel. So overall the shock is not that progressive. And that's it guys, so the final message is that if you want an air shock similar or better to a coil shock, you must aim for a big negative air chamber. So hope you like this video, see you next time, bye!